Okay, where Wendell? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, where Wendell with Texas Watch against House Bill 2924. If you put into place a two-year statute of limitations for all contracts in this state, you would have the Texas Association of Business down here before you can blink. And that's basically what we're doing to homeowners here. Homeowners who are paying the highest rates in this country continue to pay them, have seen up to 45% of the value of their policy stripped away. And now you're going to give them one more punch in the gut here because a reinsurer came and said that's the way that we can lower rates. The only way that we can lower rates is for homeowners to keep giving and giving and giving. We need to get back to first principles. Insurance is a different type of product. It's a promise on a piece of paper. You pay up front and you hope that they're going to be there for you in your time of need. Insurance consumers are different types of consumers. They are captives. They don't have the option of going bare unless they own their home outright. These contracts are different. They're contracts of adhesion. You can't negotiate with your insurance company. It's take it or leave it. And if you set the trigger at the, at the date of the event, you're not looking at those situations where they're dragging their heels, and they do that, even with the penalties on the books. It happens, unfortunately. And you're also not looking at situations where you could have some structural problems that may take some time to manifest. This is worse than what we had under the Texas Residential Construction Commission, which was so bad that this legislature and its wisdom saw fit to sunset it last time, because it recognized that some of these claims may manifest, especially if it's something dealing with the walls, the foundation, the roof, it may take some time. And so I would really caution you and look at what is consistent across everything else, which is the accrual period, the discovery rule, and there is quite a bit of case law on it, Representative Sheets, and I'm happy to get you some sites, um, but this is well-settled law. I have it now. Okay, good, good. Um, yeah, I, I would just say on slabs aren't covered, aren't supposed to be. Um, I'm sorry? In limited, very limited circumstances. We talked about slabs and walls and you know, if it's settling and that kind of stuff, it's not supposed to be covered unless it's caused by something else. Right, right, but, it, but in the event that you do fall under that particular policy, I want to take care of those homeowners. And so there was some talk about bifurcating this between commercial policyholders and homeowners, and I just felt like I need to get up here and talk about these homeowners who have been getting popped. We had a 48% loss ratio last year, a combined ratio of 85%. Do you know what the loss ratio was in 2008? 2008, we were above 100% and if you, because, of the, because of the hurricanes. And if you go back, I want you to look at all those other years dating back to 2003 when we were in the 40s and 50s, year after year after year after well, year. Well, Companies think, making money not just on their underwriting profit, but on their investment income But, as but well. if you look at those over long periods of time, the loss ratios, it evens out because they have large losses in some years. And will have some years, thank goodness, they do make money because the next time they have another bad loss or they have money to actually pay the claim. But, you but, don't want to run a very... <laughs> Not make a profit all those years, and then when you have the big loss year, what are you going to do? We want companies to make money. We want companies to be solvent. We do not want them to make excessive profits on the backs of consumers who are forced to buy their products. These are this is not a free market. You can't use the same mindset when it comes to insurance products. And frankly, we're paying for the next hurricane this year because rate making is prospective. That's why companies have reserves. So for companies to get up here and say, oh, we need to raise rates next year to take care of last year's storm is not supported by the actuarial science. Well, they use it for their experience. They yes. can't go if, back if they were paying that claim. If, we, they start, for their experience. if we start experiencing an inordinate amount of hurricanes over a 30-year period, then they could raise that cat trend. But if you have one storm, that does not necessarily justify raising the cat trend. We know that we're going to get X number of storms in a 30-year period. Um, but again, this, this I want Actually, everybody. I would say we don't know how many storms we're going to have in 30 years. Well, that's that's the problem. That is the that is the basis, though, upon which they look at all the data up to this point in time. And so I just would want to caution all the members of this committee. This bill touches all of your constituents. It touches people in North Richland Hills, touches people in Amarillo, it touches people in Dallas and Corpus Christi, and. For homeowners to be told the only way we can lower your rates is to take one more thing away from you, 
I have a, a real problem with it. And I, I told you earlier I was going to be to the point, and I feel like I've gone a little long here. Uh, but I would caution you strongly against this bill. With that, I'm happy to answer questions. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Wendell? Appreciate you being here. Thank you.